Welcome to the Five Week Linguist Show. If you want to learn a language or you teach a language, you've come to the right place. Join Janina each week for tips, resources, and advice for making engaging language learning happen anytime, anywhere. Welcome to the Five Week Linguist Show. This week I wanted to talk about three ways to get talking on italki. So I think there's a lot of sites or apps like italki out there where you can connect with native speakers. And to be honest with you, I don't really know about a whole lot of them. I know about italki. I love italki. It's not primarily about language exchange, though I think you can do it, and I've not done it before on italki, but basically people teach languages, and there are native speakers or very proficient non-native speakers, professional language teachers from all over the world giving lessons on italki, and it's amazing. So you log in, you you put money in your italki wallet, and you basically start searching. You put all your filters on and look for people to do language lessons with you. And it has a really great mix of professional teachers, which charge... A fair, fair bit, I'd say, um, compared to some of the other, the community tutors. And the community tutors are generally not credentialed or not degreed. And I've, I've worked with both for different reasons, and they've all, the experiences have been nothing but good. So when you filter out, it shows you who's available at what time, what country they're from, what language you want to learn etc. It's fantastic. Really a lot of options. And it shows you their communication tools. So are they available on Skype, FaceTime, etc. You know, how, how would you be able to connect with these people? So I've used italki in so many different ways. And I have to say, it's not the most convenient, not for me and not for my life, to be able to sit down in front of the computer and on a regular basis have a conversation with a native speaker. But it, it they've really been some of the most valuable and I've made progress fast. I absolutely love it. And I can't recommend it highly enough. So I wanted to share, I, I know that people, it can sound really terrifying, right? I know a lot of people feel really frightened about the idea of talking to a native speaker, especially when they can't speak a language very well. You know, here you are, you want to learn a language. You're thinking, I can't speak it very well. How on earth am I going to be able to talk to these people? I don't know anything. Well, I want to share with you, if you're, if you're feeling reticent in any way and you're sort of at the beginning level or even the intermediate, I wanted to share with you three quick tips. And this, these work especially for beginners, but they definitely work for, for uh, A, B, novice, intermediate as well. So the very first thing that I wanted to talk about is just let the teacher lead. So one thing that's really great about italki that the italki teachers really seem to understand is that they're going to lead the conversation most of them, right? They've got the language skills and they're going to do something that's called comprehensible input, right? They're going to speak really slowly to you to make sure that the things that they're saying are in this new language are understandable to you. That's research-based. That's Dr. Stephen Krashen. We learn through comprehensible input. And what's so powerful about these conversations is also research-based. So so when you are speaking to a native speaker, you're having to produce something, 
right? And then this native speaker is speaking back to you. And you're getting all this input back. So these teachers are really skilled at making what they say understandable to learners. So let them lead. The next one is really interesting. Uh, one that Benny Lewis shared with me, and I think I thought it was really brilliant. It's using the chat box. Essentially, let them talk to you. That same thing that I talked about, that, that comprehensible input, right? They're going to be talking to you. And you don't expect to be able to say as much back to them when you're a beginner or an intermediate. And you can answer in the chat box. So you're kind of having a conversation if you're really intimidated. And you can even open up some other apps to help you. Right, so you might open up, I don't know, Google Translate, which isn't great, but it definitely has its merits. And you can type responses. You can type questions even. That's another way to use this, right? Type you can type questions into the chat box and send them to them and then they talk and answer. And the, the next way I wanted to share with you is a simple question and answer. And this is a, this is something a lot of beginning language teachers. It's as simple as it sounds. It's question and answer. Ask a question and get an answer and base it on that. Now, what's terrifying is you might think, well, I don't really have any questions because I don't know anything, but this is the really, this is the really great part. This is really powerful. I can't, I can't stress it enough if you're a beginner. So just draft out a list of questions. And what I've done in the past is, you know, I, I've labored over trying to make the questions, but I've also just used online tools to, to create the questions. And I've also had them translated for me, you know, on something like Fiverr, you can do, if you feel really, you know, you really want to get into that conversation and you don't have a whole lot of time, that's something you can do in a pinch. And I've done it before if I'm not clear or if I have taken my, my notes and my textbooks and my online tools and I've created a list of questions and I'm just not sure about them. I put them on, on Fiverr to get edited. But essentially what you want to do is you want to find a way that works for you to create some questions. And they can be really simple. What's your name? Where do you live? For beginners, that sort of get to know you questions. But I often theme these questions. So they might be themed around family, for example, or nature, or the environment, or traveling something, right? You're going to create these questions. And you can even have your teacher help you formulate them. Once once you've once you've worked with them, you can even send them a list of questions. Okay, here are the things that I want to be able to talk about. And they'll really be able to guide you. And essentially, you you ask them the questions and they answer. And it sounds really simplistic, but the power of it is you're learning from the questions, whether you created them or not, or you had some help in creating them, or you took them from old textbooks that maybe you want to get on Amazon. You know, you type in to use German textbooks, for example. A lot of them will have a lot of questions and answers that you can take from for super cheap, a couple of dollars in many cases. And... You're getting so much language from their input, right? From their output, right? What they're saying to you. So in trying, they're trying to understand their answers, which should be more than yes or no, you're going to get some real gems of languages and you're going to get a lot of confidence in your, in your communicative skills and your communication skills. You can also do what we talked about before and copying and pasting those questions into the chat box that they can answer. So 
it's really fantastic. So as, as you're creating the questions or you're getting some help in creating the questions, you're doing something that's research based, which is you're, you're doing Dr. Stephen Krashen's learning those deliberate activities that we use to learn a language. And when these native speakers are highly proficient, non-native speakers are speaking back to you, you're getting acquisition, which is the other end of that. You're acquiring language in a natural way, the way you did when you were a child. And they're italki teachers, so they are skilled in comprehensible input and making all of that understandable. Your themed questions can be anything. We talked about family. You can talk about weather and seasons. You can talk about sports. You can talk about foods. You can talk about shopping. You can talk about homes. I mean, the possibilities are really endless. And Again, those questions provide you with so much support. And I would highly recommend somehow recording your session because that way you can go back and listen again. This activity also works beautifully with a group. If you've got a group of learners in any way, perhaps you're the teacher. I love to pick a theme, whatever, whatever I'm, I'm guiding the learners in, and they create the questions. And we use a Google Doc so there's no repetition of questions. And it really helps enhance whatever theme. It could be a particular country that, that could be studied. If you have a collaborative learning group, this italki teacher could be your, your guest speaker. Everybody could kind of join in on this conversation and everybody ask four or five questions. You record the session and you all have an amazing learning. It's real life learning lab, right? It's recorded a real conversation with a native speaker and you can listen as many times as you need to be able to understand. Well, I hope you found these tips useful for getting started with italki. Until next time. Thank you for listening to the Five Week Linguist Show with Janina Klimas. Join us each week here and visit us at reallifelanguage.com slash reallifelanguageblog for more resources for learning and teaching languages.